What's up guys, Mason the Brock Henderson here, and uh, welcome to another late night review. I screwed up. I got really caught up uh, playing Kingdom Hearts and Miss Supergirl. And unfortunately, because I'm already taping Gotham, I don't want to tape two shows at the same time and take up the entire TV. So, yeah, I'm going to watch it when it comes out at CBS.com, and then review it. Then. So... But Gotham will be the same, you know, tomorrow morning. But this is a late night review of Fargo, season two, episode six, and just wow, blows my mind how well crafted this show is. It was such the perfect balance of humor, the quirky humor that the show has, and just intense moments. It, you you feel like everything's just. <laughs> they're all standing on like this car like this keg of gunpowder and they're all holding a match and you're just waiting for one of them to like drop it and the whole thing explodes um but anyway uh, before I get into that last week I was made aware that I was not being politically correct and calling um the the guy that helps Dodd I kept calling him Indian guy Indian guy I'm not exactly the most politically correct person because I'm not one of those people that like worries about offending others because people get too easily offended anyway. So I just kind of say whatever's on my mind and if it offends you, you know, if it's something that I actually say that's offensive, I generally take it back. But if it's something that just, you know, people want me to be politi politically correct, I don't do that. And, you know, it, it's just me. It's part of who I am. But to avoid any any of that, I did look up his name. I can't remember his first name now, but his last name is Dent. Um, so I'm just going to call him Dent. That way I don't, you know, I don't offend people, and I also get the name right. So cause I, that's the only reason I was calling him any guy in the first place. I couldn't remember his freaking name. Um, so anyway, that his name is Dent. Now, now I know. Now you know. Everybody knows. We're all happy. And I, I apologize to the one guy that I offended last week. That wasn't my intention. It's just, yeah. Anyway, this week's episode. It. Let, let me start off talking about the humor because that was that's what came first. Um, you've got Hank and Lou at the house, and they're like dragging Ed off towards the police station, and you've got Peggy who's like freaking out, like you know, she. She's like, you can't take him in. You don't have proof. It's unprovable. Um, hold on one second. Alright, that's a bit better. Um, but just once again, like seeing seeing Kirsten Dunst just play this kind of like she seems slow, but then she has these moments where she like, you know, she steps up. Um, it's really interesting, and it kind of. It proves the point that I've been making that Spider-Man, Mary Jane, it wasn't really her. It was Mary Jane's character that I didn't like. Cause she's she's a she's a pretty good actress. Um, but anyway, so like I said, it starts off they're dragging him away. It's just it was so funny because she's like grabbing onto him and like stepping in front of him like no you can't take him. And then Hank like pulls her back and she it's unprovable. Points at him. It was just so funny. I don't know why. Um, but it was hysterical. And then you've got even more humor because you've got Hank talking to Peggy at the house. You've got Lou talking to Ed at the police station. And they're both just so clueless. It's It cracked me up. Like the look on Hank's face. Um, Ted Danson, man, just really plays this character well. Because uh, she's sitting there talking about, you know, I've, I've got uh, this seminar to go to tomorrow, and he's just, he's got this look on his face like, <laughs> like, are you really this stupid? Like, do you not know what's going on? And he kind of, <laughs> she's sitting there talking to him about all this stuff. He's like, well, your husband's going to be in, you know, in the police station all night. I got five dead bodies. Don't make any plans. You know, plan on being a little bit late. <laughs> she's like, just keeps talking about like she's going to go to the seminar tomorrow. He's like, you're a touch slow, aren't you? <laughs> or, I can't remember exactly. You're a tad touched, I think is what he said. 
And I just, I died laughing. It was hysterical. Um, but, so you've got that little thing going on. She just, she completely does not get it. And at the police station, like, Lou is talking to Ed about how, you know, he's, he's got these charges that he's going to bring against him. Um, and Ed just completely also does not get it. Uh, talking about, <laughs> he was saying some metaphor uh, that, from this book that uh, the girl at the uh, butcher shop was reading. It's like talking about this guy who would push this boulder up a hill and every night you know, the boulder would roll down the hill and he'd wake up and do it again. He's like, so what I'm trying to say is I'm going to protect what's mine. <laughs> it's just, it didn't make any sense. It's like, what? <laughs> I don't think he understood what he was trying to say. I think he's, he's at this point. And, um, First of all, I, I had never even heard of, uh, his name's Jesse Plemons. He also, like, he and Kirsten Dunst just play this naive couple so well. Uh, you really think that they just have no idea what's going on. And he gets caught up in this situation, and he doesn't know what to say, so he just starts spouting nonsense, you know, just... <laughs> he doesn't know, and it doesn't make any sense, because he's so confused and so freaked out about it. Um, and it finally ends up deciding to call a lawyer to Nick Offerman's character, uh, Carl. The, he's in a bar, he's drunk, he's talking to Sonny, the uh, the guy that's... Uh, he, he bought the car, he works at the auto shop. Uh, he bought the car from Peggy, which they do talk about. Uh, <laughs> once again, you know, Hank says, we're going to search every in inch of your car with this forensic technology we got now. And she's like, Wait, you don't have permission from the owner. It's like, yeah, we do. You sold the car to Sonny. She's like, oh. And so what seemed like a great idea is now just completely backfired on her. And I love, I love the fact that they're just kind of, they started off having to come up with a plan. You know, when that plan fell apart, they thought on their feet and thought they had gotten away with it. Thought on their feet again, thought they got away with it. And now it's just all backfiring on them. And every single step that they've made has been stupid. And uh, I don't know. Maybe it's kind of sick thinking like that, you know, laughing at people's misery, but in this case, when it's a couple like this that are so naive and stupid, um, because it's, it's not like they, it's not like they're actually, like, mentally ill or anything like that, it's just they're so, they're so up in the clouds, they have this, this image of everything else going on that, it's not how it is, you know, they, they live in this fantasy world, um, and they're just, they, they don't get it, but anyway, going back to Nick Offerman's character, he's drunk, so the <laughs> cop comes in, uh, saying that, you know, Ed's asked for him as his lawyer, he's like, see, Sonny, it's what happens whenever you have people who need help come to the best lawyer in town, so he, aren't you the only lawyer in town? Shut up, Sonny. <laughs> so just so much humor in this little space of time. And I loved it. Um, and this was like, yeah, that was all the humor. And then, well, okay, not all the humor. Last bit of humor. Nick Offerman's character gets to the, the police station. I'm going to call him Carl because I can't say Nick Offerman's character so many times. Anyway, um, so Carl gets to the station and he's... Like I said, he's drunk, and so he's just talking about, he's talking and talking about, you know, justice, and I'm going to fight for the right to do all of this, and he starts walking one way, cop's like, Ed's in the back, he's like, I'm going to fight for his right, and just keeps walking, and then Lou catches up to him, and he tries to tell him something, and he cuts him off, he's like, stand aside, uh, pawn of the state or something like that, and then he gets in talking to to uh, Ed about what's going on, um, and Ed, oh, the look on his face was priceless, because he, like, starts asking him, you know, all right, don't say anything, you know, the, the establishment has ears, so we're going to find out if you're G or NG, he said, so you're going to say, you're going to say yes or no, and then he, like, nods his head, he's like, in this case, Theoretically, for the cameras watching, we're going to say that, in this case, a negatory response 
is actually an affirmation. And the look on Ed's face, he's completely just dumbfounded, has no idea what this guy's talking about because he's so drunk, he's just rambling. And then he... <laughs> it, was, it was such a priceless scene. And so that's... You know, they just... They built up all this humor just as things are starting to go wrong. Um, and so, so while, while all that's going on, uh, the Gerhardt family, first of all, earlier on in the episode, um, they had a scene... Since I'm talking about the intense part, I'm going to jump back. Because um, they had a scene between Dodd and Bear. Because, you know, Dodd's like, once again, furious at his daughter because she's dressed so, you know, she's dressed like a whore, according to him. And um, it's kind of funny because, yeah, she's wearing very re revealing clothing, but it's not nearly as bad as some of the stuff that girls wear nowadays. Anyway. This, this is back in time, like I said, so it does make sense. I, I like the fact that they're staying with that time period. Um, so anyway, he's like mad at her, and then Bear comes charging out because he just got the call that his son was in jail and like throws Dodd on the ground, starts hitting him, and then here comes Dent with a gun to protect him. And so Dodd like gets off his belt and he's like, Do you want the strap or the or the buckle? And it just, it was so bizarre because it felt like a parent disciplining his son, and they're just, they're brothers, you know? He, he's older brother, obviously, but it was so weird that, obviously, he, well, okay, he does have a shotgun point to his head, so it doesn't make sense that he's not going to, like, protest against this, but it was so weird to see Dodd react like this, like, a scolding parent, like, you're going to get the belt now, do you want the, the strap or the buckle? I don't know, it's so bizarre. And Bear not wanting to look weak in front of everybody says, Give me the buckle. <laughs> it's just like, okay, about to hit him. In comes the mom to save the day. Uh, she just yells at Dodge, She's like, Stop this with your foolishness. And you're not right now. You're going to get us all killed, splitting this family apart, and yada, yada, yada. Tells them to go, you know, kill the butcher and go. Why do people interrupt me? Man, my phone gives me NFL updates. I never asked for them. Anyway, um, so she, she tells Dodd to go kill the butcher, tells Bear to go get uh, her, her grandson back, his son back, out of jail. So that's, that's where that scene leaves off. And then ensues all the humor, everything going on. And then as... But right before Carl gets to the police station, there's a scene where, you know, Hank is talking to Peggy some more, and um, all of a sudden you see cars pulling up outside. It's Dodd, Dent, and then a few henchmen. Uh, Dent's like going around back, but they they have a little ex exchange. You can see Hank is like, he's ready to take them all on, and then because Dent snuck around back, gun to the, you know. Sneaks up behind him, and when he turns, hits him in the, the head with the butt of his gun. And then, like I said, Peggy, one of the most naive characters, somehow steps up when needed most. Uh, first of all, Dodd sends Dent and one other guy, I think, to the police station to help out Bear because he, you know, the cop said that's where, or sorry, Hank said that that's where um, they could find Ed. And so he sends Denton the henchman over there, and then he and two other henchmen go inside to find Peggy. And uh, so they head downstairs, Dodd's first, and then a henchman goes one way. Uh, and it's just, you know, like we've, like we've seen in other episodes, filled with, um, what's it called, magazines, just loaded, you know, up, up to about my height, uh, magazines, just several stacks so crowded in this case really helpful for Peggy because she hides out in the back you don't really even see her in this scene you just see Dodd like what he's doing which is I like that choice because you know we don't get to we don't get to see Peggy do her thing and it makes it feel a bit more like you know 
is she really like a badass in disguise or is this just like all accidental stuff that's just happening so luckily for her um but anyway so Dodd's like looking close to the stairs and the guy that went around all the newspapers and disappeared behind him all of a sudden you hear a crash and he's like groaning and Dodd's like shut up and then the guy the other henchman comes walking down the stairs and you hear the, the stairs squeak and Dodd hears it and like turns and shoots him I'm just like holy crap like what <laughs> why did what and so sure enough Dodd goes finds the other henchman sees that he's been knocked out by something steps around him and you know he's got his gun and he's got uh, this the rod taser that he used earlier on in the season and so he can't really fit you know holding both so he sets the rod taser down and like rolls off the shelf and I like that they didn't make it like you know they didn't zoom in on that but they showed it happening you know the focus was on him and that kind of happened off to the side and I like that because it wasn't like you know trying to be oh look there's the taser or what's going to happen no it just it happened naturally so that way whenever Peggy does pick up the taser off camera and then he like comes back around the corner that he was just looking behind she tases him it's just like it all makes sense you know they didn't have to show it for it to happen because you know it's just I, I don't know it's hard to describe why that worked so well but it did it just it felt like they didn't have to show anything that Peggy was doing and that just made it a bit more interesting you know it made it a bit more mysterious and like not showing the taser uh, just just showing it fall off the shelf but not really showing it you know just that's not the focus because it, it almost like wants you to forget about it so whenever he does come back around the corner and Peggy's got it and you're just like oh I see what happened and you, you know it, you can use your imagination more that way too and that's one of the great things about the show you you get to use your imagination a bit what's going on in the mind of the characters what's going on off camera that's great you know it hardly ever happens in shows nowadays even the best shows oftentimes you don't get to use your imagination about you know, what happened off camera what's this what's going through this character's mind um, because oftentimes either you know, if it's what's in their mind their actions make it clear what they're thinking and what happens off camera generally they go back and show what happens off camera so you don't get to imagine it anymore in this scene it was like you get to imagine what's going on you get to imagine naive old Peggy just like walking around like confused and then the thing falls off and she's like oh grabs it like waiting for him like a little bit scared but she's like waiting and then she sees him walk around and takes her chance and gets or you can imagine badass Peggy and like she's like hiding behind the bookcase stealthily and then sees it drop picks it up slowly and waits for her chance and then pounces you know just so many different things could have happened off camera I love that about this show this show does such a good job between camera work between choices it makes speaking of camera work the decision to make like the different scenes happening at the same time they did like the split screen thing they've done it since the beginning in this episode oh it works so magnificently they have scenes where people are like driving to their locations you know like driving to the police station driving to the to ed's house and it just on one side they've got you know they've got milligan and then they've got dodd and then they switch over and now on this side is Peggy sitting in her living room. Here's Ed sitting in the back of the uh, the back of the police car. It just works so well. It's so beautifully toyed with, and the concept is wonderful. This show just knocks it out of a park in every aspect. Um, but anyway, <laughs> let me finish recapping what happens because the way it ends, like I said, it mixes the humor in. And then it just gets really intense because Bear and the henchmen are like ready to attack the police station. Have another scene where once again Lou just standing down like six guys with shotguns and all he's got is his pistol. And he's just talking to him like he's got 
everything in control. You know, like nothing, nothing bad's about to happen. He's like, you, know, you, you need to stay out here. And I don't know. It's just, I, I love seeing that side of him. That nothing's going to intimidate him. Uh, side of him. Very, very good choice for his character. Um, trying to think what else. All right. Uh, that, that's all that happened. Like he just, he pretty much kind of threatened them. They threatened him back and say, you know, send out, better said, send out my son in the next five minutes or we're coming in. So, Lou, being the genius that he is, sets up this plan. Um, decides to send Carl out as uh, Bear's son's lawyer to talk to Bear. Um, meanwhile, he takes Ed and escapes out the back where Dent had gone around back um, he's he's very very clever uh, he he found the window where Ed was and he's about to take the shot but then they close the blind and so he's looking for another point of entry and just you know really showing that he he knows what to do in these situations he knows what decisions to make he knows where to put himself where to position himself in the best strategical place um, and of course because he's Native American very good tracker as well so he can you know, find things that others might miss, and as shown in earlier episodes when he's at the crime scene finding out stuff at uh, Ed and Peggy's house, finding the bleach and everything. So he's just he's a character that you really don't want to mess with. Um, but anyway, so uh, Lou does get Ed out, but you see that Dent is like he hears them coming out of the the building and I'm like oh crap is he about to kill him but they do escape into the woods but Dent sees the open window and I'm like okay he's following them this could be bad meanwhile up front Carl is like talking to the father uh, to, to Bear about how they need to leave because they're only making it worse for his son he said you know he's a minor it was a missed shot, so at most he'll do five year, or ten years, five years if he for good behavior. Um, but what you're doing right now, if you break in there and get him out, he'll be running for the rest of his life. And he says, "Well, what if we just take the butcher?" He says, "Well, then he's going to get charged with aiding and abetting." And you know, very showing that he is a very good lawyer. He knows the ins and outs of law. He knows what to say and when to say it, even though he's partially drunk right now. I think he sobered up a bit before that. But kind of an emotional moment, though, because he's like... It looked like Bear... You know, he, after they said all this, all the exchange of information, Bear, like... And he just... He's kind of teared up and, like, like prepared himself to die. And then Bear just walks away and brings everybody with him. And you just see Carl just kind of sit down, smoking his cigarette, and just kind of like breathing heavily. You know, just very emotional moment for him. Um, and the way it ends for Ed and Lou, they're heading through the woods, and I keep expecting like this gunshot, you know, just gunshot and Ed's down with a bullet wound or something. Uh, but they make it to the edge of the woods. Hank is pulling up right as they, right as they're there. Ed takes the chance and starts running down the road. Lou's about to take half after him, and Hank's just like, "Let him go. You know where he's going." So they get in the car um, and they drive away. Right before Dent comes walking out of the woods, looks down the road and starts heading right where Ed's heading, setting up for a very exciting next episode. Um, but oh, oh. Ooh, one more thing. They showed the the daughter, uh, Dodd's Dodd's daughter, and you know she last episode she talked to uh, Milligan about how she wanted her dad dead, how she wanted to help him, and he told her you know you need to give us information. She finally called with information this this episode and said you know they're sending people they're sending people down to take care of the butcher in Laverne, um, and so. I was expecting like Milligan to get there and just be this whole firefight, 
you know, between Million and his crew, and then Dodd and Bear and their crew. But it never happened because Milligan charged the Gerhardt farm. And, like, the, it was crazy, because, like, the mom was talking to, um, M- Mother Gerhardt was talking to Dot's daughter about how she needs to step up and be a leader, how, you know, there's no more men's work and women's work, how, you know, they have the equal rights now. I knew, I knew it was around this time, you know, the whole women's right, rights movements, uh, just, Based on based on how Dodd was acting about his mom taking over, um, but you know, as they're having this talk, she looks outside, sees the guys charging the house, and then like tackles her to the ground before the gunfire just explodes the kitchen. And Otto was in the kitchen. They don't show him being killed, but they did show in the previews for next week that he did die, um, and they showed the daughter being upset with Milligan. But that that's for next week, you know. Won't talk about that for now, but it does set up a very interesting side of the story because she trusted Milligan to take care of her dad. You know, that's what she wanted done, and that's why she gave him that information. Instead, he uses it to attack the Gerhards when they're weak, you know, when their forces are out, and it almost killed her. So I think that's going to be a very interesting source of conflict for them. I'm not sure if. She's going to try to kill Milligan and possibly get killed herself in the process. I don't know what's going to happen there. But it sets up for a lot of interesting stuff there. Like I said, with the Gerhards, you know, don't know what's going to happen to Dodd. You know, he's still in Peggy's basement. Um, he, he, once she tasered him, she tasered him until he blacked out. Uh, obviously, they've got two Gerhart guys in the basement. Um, Ed making a beeline towards home with Den on his back, tracking him. Just, and then you've got Lou and Hank just having, like, they both now have stood up against the Gerhards. Pretty sure that's going to make them pretty angry. Um, very interested to see kind of where, what ha- what happens there. But, man, like, like I said, I can't remember what episode I said this on, but there was an episode where I talked about how this show has a lot of build up before it finally just releases and lets all the action out and lets all the interesting, you know, where's the story going, where's the story, here's where it's going, we're in the middle of it right now, and I'm loving it, you know, I'm loving the intensity, but also the fact that they can just throw those moments with Ed and Peggy in, and just make me crack up at how stupid they are, um, and all this, you know, all the jokes thrown in there, just so clever writing, great show absolutely great show and if you're looking for a bit of action but also a lot of comedy this is the perfect show absolutely the perfect show for you um so yeah i'm really excited where this is going i don't know who's going to come out on top um obviously based on the first season of fargo we know lou makes it and molly makes it uh i don't think molly's mom makes it but i don't know if that's because of cancer or because of what's going on right now so that'll be interesting to see but yeah you know just really 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 well done episode and i'm excited to see where it goes so let me know what you guys think and i'll see you at the next review peace out